This woman's name is Marissa Ventura. She is a mother and father to her only son named Ty. Since she divorced her husband, she had to struggle to raise her son alone. She supports her small family by working hard from day to night. She works as a waiter in a five-star hotel located in Manhattan. The hotel is often a place to stay for important people who are rich and famous. Even though she was only a waitress, Marissa always did her job wholeheartedly and never complained at all. Thanks to her hard work, which is always disciplined and nimble, she often gets compliments from her superiors and guests. Her friend named Stephanie didn't even hesitate to recommend her to fill the position as the new assistant manager. One day, the hotel had two very important guests. The first guest was a member of the People's Legislative Assembly named Christopher Marshall. At that time Chris was preparing a campaign to run for senator. He chose the hotel as his conference center. While the second guest is an upper-class socialite woman named Caroline Lane. When Caroline saw that Marissa was dedicated to her job, she deliberately used Marissa to do something outside of her duties as a waitress to buy stockings for her. Even though Marissa was in a hurry because she had to attend her psalm speech at school, she was still willing to do the task Caroline ordered. Arriving at the shop, Marissa felt furious because she kept being ignored by the shopkeeper. This made she immediately snap her. Yo, unless we're not good enough for you to serve, in which case I'm sure your manager is. What do you say, ladies? Am I right or am I right? Yeah. right. right. After that, she immediately went to her son's school because it was time for Ty to give a speech. However, Ty stuttered and his friends laughed at him. Of course it made he spontaneously get off the stage. Marissa, who saw that, immediately approached him, who swore he would never give another speech. Marissa carefully said if that feeling of nervousness often overtakes anyone and she is sure that if on another occasion he tries again, surely it will be much better. However, the advice didn't work at all to change Ty's mind. To make he happy again, she gave him a gift. Marissa, who had to return to work, then took Ty to the hotel and left him with her co-workers. Arriving at the hotel, Caroline told her to return her clothes to the boutique and Marissa without objection immediately carried it out. However, Stephanie, who was supposed to help Marissa, was instead swayed by expensive items. Especially Caroline's famous brand clothes that will be returned to the boutique. Since Stephanie didn't want to pass up the opportunity, she kept trying to persuade Marissa to try on and wear one. On the other hand, Ty who felt bored, then decided to take a walk around the hotel. While in the elevator, he accidentally meets Chris who has been his idol. Chris casually invites Ty to talk. He then felt amazed by the intelligence of 10-year-old. Without thinking much, he asked Ty to come with him to the park. Ty accepted the invitation with pleasure, but he wanted to ask his mother permission first. On the other hand, Marissa finally melted with Stephanie's persuasion. While trying on the fancy clothes, Ty and Chris came to see her. Chris looked amazed when he saw Marissa looking beautiful and elegant in that dress. At that moment, she was forced to pretend to be Caroline. She had no other choice but to accept Chris's invitation to go to the park with her. While they were at the park, Marissa thanked Chris for being generous to take Ty for a walk in the park. And because of Chris's kindness, Ty, who had been gloomy since the chaos of the speech, slowly became cheerful again. Chris always shares tips and tricks on how to fight nervousness when giving speeches in front of a crowd. So during his speech, he would tightly grip the paperclip that was considered as a talisman to get rid of his nervousness. And after hearing Chris' words, Ty felt better. He then takes Marissa and Chris out on a penguin spotting fun. While they were watching the penguins, Chris suddenly invited Marissa to come to Maddox's charity event. She who wanted to end her lies, of course refused his invitation. She realized that she was just a fake Caroline. She knew that he had to return to being a servant soon. She immediately asked Ty to leave Chris. Arriving at the hotel, she immediately took off the expensive clothes. Because if she was found to be wearing Caroline's clothes without permission, then she could be fired from her job. In the midst of the panic, Paula suddenly called Marissa to meet their boss. She suddenly felt extraordinary anxiety. She thought that if her boss found out about her impudent attitude and of course her boss would immediately kick her out of the hotel. But unexpectedly, she was actually appointed as the new assistant manager when she successfully passed the six-week training period. Her boss said that sometimes when life closes one opportunity, another way will open. It turned out that Stephanie had submitted Marissa's application file to HRD without her knowledge. This of course sparked Marissa's emotions and there was a dispute between the two of them. Stephanie warned Marissa not to waste the opportunity that was in front of her eyes. Meanwhile elsewhere, Chris, who has fallen in love with the fake Caroline, immediately asks Lionel who is the butler to send an invitation to lunch to Caroline's room. The next day, Marissa was immediately shocked to find that she and Chris had made the headlines in the newspapers. She is increasingly afraid that her lies will be discovered. However, Stephanie assured her that everything would be fine. The news reached Chris, and he didn't even mind it. It was precisely his secretary, Jerry, who kept fussing over the news for fear that Chris' image would get worse. Meanwhile, the real Caroline is sad because her boyfriend left her. Suddenly she was surprised and happy when she received an invitation to lunch from Chris. She didn't want to miss the chance. She left immediately. Caroline. Oh my. Um, what a wonderful. Teddy Parrish. 
Chris became astonished by what he saw now. The woman he was with now was not the Caroline he met at that time. He confirmed it directly with Lionel, although a thousand times wanted to deny it. But she is a woman named Caroline Line. Meanwhile, Marissa, who was on duty there, always tried to avoid meeting Chris face to face. After finishing lunch, Chris told Jerry that Caroline who came earlier was not the woman he wanted to date. While they were talking about it, he accidentally saw the fake Caroline, Marissa. At that time she was walking with Ty. After seeing what happened, Chris quickly approached Marissa and told her what happened at lunch earlier. She immediately gave an excuse if she had moved to another hotel. She didn't want their conversation to spread so she immediately left and avoided Chris. However, even though Marissa kept avoiding Chris, this did not make Chris despair. This made Chris even more attracted to her. Chris even promised Jerry that he would come to the charity event as long as Jerry managed to bring Marissa to the event too. Then Jerry immediately went to Lionel to ask for help in finding her. Lionel, who already knows everything, immediately tell her to come to the charity event and end any relationship with Chris. Marissa's friends, who knew about the news, agreed with her boss's suggestion. They didn't want Marissa to get carried away with love and start neglecting her newly built career. As good friends, they were even ready to prepare everything she needed to perform optimally at the charity event. That evening, Chris warmly welcomed Marissa's presence, who looked so enchanting. Without further ado, at that moment he was dancing with her. However, when Marissa was about to expose her lies to Chris, he had to go see Maddox. Caroline who witnessed all the sights naturally felt jealous. Then she chased Marissa who kept running away from her. After catching up to her, she realized that Marissa's face looked familiar. But before she paid any further attention, Marissa ran away from her again. While outside the building, Chris, who realized that Marissa was going to leave the event, then immediately hold her. He wanted to spend that night with her. Are you running away from something you're afraid to... Look, I've made so many mistakes. There's something you don't know, okay? You're mesmerizing. The next morning, after leaving a letter, Marissa then slowly left with the quietest steps possible. However, no matter how neatly she keeps her secret, it will eventually be discovered. She who had just left Chris' room, was caught red-handed by Caroline. Caroline, who felt unacceptable because her identity had been stolen, she then complained about Marissa's actions to the hotel manager and also Chris who he has arrived. Caroline, who was fed up, immediately exposed all of Marissa's lies. She purposely took advantage of that moment to win Chris' heart. Even though Chris insisted on denying the truth, at that moment Marissa was dishonorably fired. After that incident, Lionel also resigned from his job. Because for Lionel, what we do does not define who we are. Although we serve them, we are not their servants. What determines is how we rise after falling. Marissa then left with a broken heart. Meanwhile, Chris urges her to tell him the truth. Marissa, who was no longer able to hold back the lie, then revealed all her secrets. At that time, she just wanted one day to experience life without feeling inferior just because her profession as a maid was often underestimated. But no matter how hard he denied the reality, it would only make it clear that they would never become one. Because of their caste differences that were like the heavens and the earth, there was a vast expanse between the two of them. Marissa felt that day was her worst day of all time. Arriving at home, instead of being greeted with a hug by her mother, Marissa was even scolded by her mother. Apparently, her mother already knew the news of the dismissal. She told her to wake up from her dream because after all the installments and food could not be filled with a delusion. Her mother immediately sent Marissa to work with relatives, but she vehemently refused. She is indeed a waitress at the hotel, but she is not a maid. She will continue to work according to her choice and doesn't care about her mother's decision. Since that incident, Marissa's life has always been in the spotlight of cameras and has become the target of journalists. Chris didn't want to remain silent. He made it clear to the media that he and Marissa were just friends. He is friends with anyone regardless of social status. He didn't want the difference in social status that existed in his friendship to become a laughing stock. After things died down, Chris focused on his candidacy for senator. Meanwhile, Marissa is busy supporting her family by working as a waitress at another hotel. One day, Ty accidentally saw the news that Chris was going to hold a press conference at the hotel where Marissa worked. Ty, who was going to school, suddenly came to the press conference. Arriving there, he ventured to speak his heart out. Ty knew that his mother had lied to Chris and that was not a mistake that could be taken lightly. But considering that perfection belongs to God and mistakes belong to everyone, he sincerely asked Chris to forgive and give Marissa a second chance. Chris was willing to forgive and give Marissa a second chance. Ty then drove Chris to meet Marissa. I haven't had a story like this in a while. Ty, what are you both doing down there? Come on. Hi. Remembering that his love for Marissa is still as great as ever, Chris confesses his feelings again. Even if the world is against them, he will still love Marissa sincerely without any conditions. Of course this shocked the entire media crew and became good news for Marissa's relatives. Ms. Ventura, are you gonna help clean up the Senate? 
A year later, Chris was elected as a senator and Marissa became a successful hotel manager. Then they live as a matching couple. This film was based on the true story of Stephen Clark Rockefeller who is the son of the governor of New York, named Nelson Rockefeller. In 1959, Stephen married Amory Rasmussen who was a waitress who had worked at his family's hotel in Manhattan. 